So tonight we have, um, I'm going to talk about Rosie Adda a little bit because she's going to introduce Jake, but um, Rosie's three-time Olympian. Um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, she's been three-time Olympian. She's Commonwealth Games medalist, uh, World Cup uh, gold medalist as well, um, correspondent on Entertainment Tonight, et cetera, et cetera. So... Huge, huge resume there. We thought she would be the perfect person to uh, host this evening with Jake tonight. Um, she's going to talk about Jake because tonight's not about me. It's about him and Rosie. So here you go, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Wow. Look at everybody. Not bad, right, Jake? Yeah. yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Black Toe Running. We're so glad that you're here. I'm going to talk to this guy right here, and uh, I think you all know who he is. Why don't you tell him who you are? Yeah, I'm Jake Robertson. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jake so happens to be the national record holder in the marathon from New Zealand with a time of, eh, 208.26. Yeah. <laughs> that's... that's that's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, I've only run one, so, I mean, i got something to go. That's pretty impressive when you think that uh, he's been running around and around and around on the track up until just a few months ago. And I know you've run some shorter races, but then the first time you hit the course for the marathon, you establish a national record. Um, yeah, actually, my, my national record was not the aim. Uh, I actually wanted to run a lot faster than I did. Um, just uh, the conditions and the course uh, didn't allow me to do so on that day. Uh, so hopefully Toronto's weather uh, turns up and ah, we can go, go faster. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have a chat. We're going to sit down. Jake Robertson's here. Um, I'm Rosie Etta, and uh, we're going to chat, and then we're going to open it up for questions from you guys. So listen up, listen in. Hopefully we'll get some tips, because I know that, how many of you guys are runners? Yeah, let's see a show of hands. That's just about everybody. Love it, love it. So I'm gonna pick his brain for you guys, and anything else that you wanna know, we, uh, you, can, you know, raise your hand, and you can ask, um, ask Jake. All right, let's switch up the mics here. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, there you go. It's working now. Oh, man. So, Jake's story is fascinating. Um, and we want to just touch a little bit on it when he was just a, a wee one, a teenager, a, a kid with a dream, and he has a counterpart. He's got a twin brother, so they, had, they share the same dream. They shared that dream when they were 15, 16, 17, and they share the same dream now. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that, and then we're going to get into you as this accomplished runner and what you're doing now. Um, I'd like to know this. How are you liking Toronto? Uh, I'm, I'm loving it. I mean, I've been here since, what, yesterday midday. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, didn't get a, um, a time zone shock. Uh, Travelling the right way. Um, my mate, uh, Matt Hughes, one of your Canadian uh, steeplechase runners, uh, he took me to the NBA last night, so got me right into the time zone. And Nice. Yeah, nice. Had to buy a Kauai uh, vest, uh, so now a Raptors fan. Yeah, now official. There you go, official Raptors fan. Did you get a chance to, well, you just got in yesterday, so you didn't see the course. Uh, no, I didn't see the course, but I've done a lot of homework and um, study, um, especially on my competition, on the course, the conditions, what could happen, and um, always I'm planning for, you know, the worst case scenario, and any, any better weather is always just a blessing. So. so Jake, as I mentioned earlier, is a national record holder from New Zealand in the marathon, um, but he doesn't spend a lot of time in New Zealand. In fact, when he was 17 with his twin brother, they decided to move to Kenya to train with the best of the best. So my question to you, Jake, is, okay, who came up with that idea? Was it you or your brother? That was me. Um, <laughs> I take full credit for that, and my brother will always give me full credit for that. Uh, 
it came about when I was in um, the World Cross Country in Japan in 2006. And that's, uh, there I met a lot of the Kenyans who were rooming on the same floor as me. Uh, that's when I asked them about uh, doing some altitude training a year later because the World Cross Country was in Kenya. So that's when I came up with the idea I'll do an altitude stint before the World Cross. And it just came about that we never took our return ticket home. We kind of had that planned, but yeah, our parents didn't know that. That's incredible. And the, and the idea behind that was to train with the best of the best to become even faster, even better. I mean, running is your life. Yeah, well, um, obviously we did a lot of study before going out there and... You know, there, there's obviously a lot to learn from there. It is a basic lifestyle, but training in a, in a group of 30, I mean, it's, it's, it's the peloton effect. It's, it really is just like cycling. And, uh, you know, um, such, such events as like Breaking 2 from Nike um, prove that. Um, you know, you can go a lot faster with uh, teamwork. And uh, that's one major reason why we went out there. Another is the altitude. And... Um, yeah, just when we were there, I mean, some of the first sights, seeing a pack of, you know, a couple of hundred athletes running down the road and realizing uh, you have to beat every single one of them if you want to make your dreams come true. And uh, that, you know, on our first couple of days there was uh, a real eye-opener. What's, uh, what was the biggest life style change that you had to adapt to when you moved over there? Uh, that's, that's a tough one, because I was expecting a lot worse uh, conditions than uh, they actually were. Uh, I'd probably say the lack of space. Um, me and my brother had to share a mattress uh, for you know, quite a while on the floor. Um, one reason is we... We didn't really uh, want to pay for another one. Uh, <laughs> second reason was um, the person who got us the mattress, um, he wanted us to ask for another one, but, you know, just uh, out of respect and um, didn't want to ask for too much, you know, he was already doing a lot for us, so we just never did. That's neat. Okay, got a lightning round here. Rapid fire questions. You ready? Morning or afternoon workouts? Morning. Favorite hype music? Uh, hip hop. Hip hop. How do you like to start intervals? You, do you start in the front, middle, back, and then work your way up? Always progressive. What do you do on your day off? Uh, chill. Like sauna, <laughs> sauna, chill, sauna, chill, good food. Friends, just chill. Okay. Recovery, massage or ice? Massage. Mm. Okay, worst conditions to race in? Uh. Wind, <laughs> rain, cold, heat. Wind, wind, is always, wind is always bad because it can slow times. Cold and heat... Yeah. Pick one. Ex pick one. Ex extremes. Uh, cold, cold is bad. Okay. What's the best? What's the best condition to run in? Hopefully what Sunday brings. Ah, there you go. All right. We'll slow it down now. You're the national record holder with the time of 208.26. What percentage of that accomplishment is training versus talent? Well, uh, I was a very talented uh, kid um, until talent didn't take me any further. Everybody else had started training when, uh, when we were in high school and I no longer was able to win the races like I was growing up. So I started to train and within one year I made the national team to a world youth championship. Um, so that's when hard work took over talent and... Um, Yes, I grew and grew, and um, especially when I went to Africa and learnt all the lessons I learnt, uh, hard work, determination, um, actually 
almost destroyed me where I had uh, two years of injury. So now um, with maturity, patience, and my hard work ethic, um, I'm getting the results I am today. Um, consistency over uh, short-term intensity. And uh, yeah, I mean, talent is nothing without uh, hard work. How do you overcome injuries? How do you overcome disappointment mentally? Um, there was a point in the two years of injury that, you know, people were doubting whether they'd ever see me race again. Um, I never doubted myself. Um, I knew um, that one day I would get right. Um, but, yeah, just you have to try and stay positive. If you don't believe in yourself, um, then, you know, nobody ever will. But... Yeah, how to over overcome it, I just always tell people, you know, positive energy, positive vibes, thinking positive, it can change the outcome a lot quicker if, you, you know, if you're positive. When you're at the line, how do you approach your race? Is it um, a planned approach? Is it the day of? Or is it contingent on who's in the race? So are we talking about uh, race tactics or...? Yes, race yeah. tactics. Well, you always have to be flexible. Um, I like to train for every situation. I train all my weaknesses so that uh, people cannot exploit me in any way. Um, yeah, I'm always very flexible within the race. I know that Sunday, a lot of them, um, I'm a lot quicker than them over 10K and half marathon, so... I know a lot of them are experienced marathoners and they'll want to drop me before the last couple of K. So therefore, my, um, my tactic is, you know, pretty much what you'd think is, you know, set. But um, I ha I'll have to think quick on my feet and um, see what, you know, see what comes. How are you feeling? I mean, it's less than three days before your competition. What's your general vibe right now? Well, they say the race uh, starts in the hotel because that's when all the athletes start eyeing each other. And yeah. uh, in, in this case, um, a lot of the, the men's elite field, we started it in Nairobi when we were flying out because we were all on the same flight. How so, many? How many roughly? Gosh, that must uh, have been a, what a flight, right? Can you six, imagine that? Walking up and yeah. down the aisles. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Right. I think... 95% of the men's elite field were on that flight. That's amazing. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I like to laugh about it and think, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, there's so much tension in the air already. Um, but, you know, this is what we train for. We chose this and, you know, I, I like to laugh about it. What's your sleep pattern like? Um, you know, the week leading up to your race? Because that's when you become super aware of what's about to happen, I would imagine. Yeah, obviously, um, nights before travel, you're always worried you're going to miss your flight or something. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, as the race gets closer and closer, um, yeah, you don't sleep too well, obviously. <laughs> A lot of thoughts, um, but it, it's, it's the same as um, nights before a hard training session. While I'm in Kenya, I'm sometimes really nervous uh, or really just in deep thought about how it's going to go. And yeah, so it's, it's, it's a process, and I like to practice everything in training just the way I uh, race. So, regardless of if I sleep good or sleep bad, um, I'll still be able to hit a good result. Um, I know that. People are just chomping at the bit to ask you some questions specific to training. Let's uh, get into that just a little bit and unpack that with um, nutrition. Um, there you go, right there. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Morton's your sponsor. Um, and they're a company that um, I've read up on, and apparently they're kind of they're kind of blowing up. Like, I mean, this is uh, nutrition. And um, how do you use them to 
elevate your training and, um, and your racing? W what's it all about? Yeah, well, uh, I was actually one of the first uh, people to be working with Morton. And um, I, was, I was testing out prototypes before they released uh, their product to the, uh, the, to the world. And it takes a lot to shock me. Uh, but this this really shocked me. The first time I tried it, I was, I was blown away by the, the sports science behind it, how it felt um, while I was running. Uh, it, you know, I was drinking it, and it felt like I'd drunk nothing. So there was no, no liquid jumping around in my stomach, and I was uh, doing a hard session, and I just couldn't believe it. And, yeah, since then, they've blown up, and... I'm uh, I'm happy it's happened so quick for them, um, but uh, yeah, they just breakthrough technology. Their high carbohydrate value, um, you know, just simple things um, that it, you know, it doesn't jump around in the stomach when you run. Um, the carbohydrate loading, you know, the days before the race to top up um, if you cannot eat enough pasta or food, you know. Uh, so, yeah, always in training. I'll have uh, more 10 the, days, um, the day before my hard sessions, just as I would before uh, my, my race. So, yeah, on um, Saturday I'll be having, you know, two, uh, two bottles of more 10 and obviously before and during the race. Yeah. Do you have scheduled stops during the race, or is it just as as is needed? Yeah, the the elite drink stations are every not stops. I shouldn't say, but yeah. you know, pick up the water. Yeah, yeah the I'm elite drink stop. stations are every five k. So, I'll be uh, drinking the three twenty Morton mix um, every station. Um, I'm actually going to put uh, two gels, the new Morton gels, and that uh, I think it's going to be fifteen and thirty k. Uh, just to break up the fluids, um, but also the Morten gel is much like uh, the Morten uh, fluid. So, but um, yeah, just to break it up, and yeah, every 5k I'll be hitting my drinks as I practiced in training back in Kenya, and um, yeah, obviously I have a nutritionist um, from Morten that has worked out my sweat ratio and how much I should be drinking. Um, hydration must be a very important thing for you. Is that um, something that you do you double up on that uh, the day or two before a race? Yeah, hydration is always important. Um, throughout training preparations, uh, if you don't hydrate right, you can get injured or sick. So hydration is always important. And yeah, more teens, obviously, um, hydration for performance is important as well. Do you have a, a, a good luck meal? I'm talking about the night before the morning race. Is there, is there a meal that you follow or a little, just something that you just got to have? Uh, not, not really. Uh, we, we always try to, I always try to practice everything in training as I would um, as a race. But getting used to one thing rather than the other um, and then we, you know, we travel to a race hotel and we do not know what we're going to get the night before the race. So if we're not used to that meal, then stomach issues can happen. So we, I always try to practice uh, having you know, one or two or three different type of meals that are quite similar. Uh, obviously carbohydrate-based, rice or pasta. Uh, and from there, you know, some light meat, preferably fish. I would go with um, chickens, also okay, or or some uh, mince meat, or something very light, but just enough for taste, and yeah, not um, not not too much different. Um, very basic, yeah. What would you advise all these runners here to not do <laughs> the days leading up to the race? Uh, you can get deep. You can get, you know, you know. Yeah, number one, number one would be avoiding uh, fibrous foods. <laughs> that can be a mistake. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've learned that plenty of times in the past. <laughs> um, 
And then finally I realized, yeah, I should stop that. (laughs) What would you advise these guys to do? Like something that just clicks for you? A night or two or three before the race? Hydration. Hydration is uh, a very important thing. Um, You know, the body's made up of water. Simple as that, like hydration is key. Uh, Mortin is great. Um, I would recommend Mortin to anybody, and I don't, I don't stand with the, uh, with, you know, companies I don't believe in, but uh, Mortin would be great. Um, before the race, uh, even if you're not used to it, you know, a couple hours before the race, just to be sipping on that, uh, rather than something like water where it can disturb the stomach during the race. Um, yeah, I'd recommend something like this. Do you sleep a lot? I sleep um, when I feel the need to, but, yeah, oversleeping can be also not so good. Mm -hmm. Um, What are we talking about in terms of average night's sleep? And then also, do you nap? Yeah, um, average night's sleep, eight, nine hours. Um, Then plus, on my hard days when, obviously, I'm really uh, waking up quite early... Uh, I usually get a nap in after lunch, uh, after the food coma, so. (laughs) You just mentioned on a hard day. Um, Can you share with us what is, what constitutes a hard workout day for you? What is that workout that puts the fear of God in you and you wake up, you go, oh my gosh, I have this today. Can you go through that with us? Well, uh, a key key marathon training session, um, the long run. The long run at pace, so you, you know, you obviously have a, a pace set, and you have to, you know, you have a warm up beforehand. But from K one, after the warm up, you have to hit the pace and continue for you know 35, 40 k, sometimes. This type of uh, training is, you know, this type of training. If you get it wrong, you, you can't do it tomorrow. You can't, you can't do it in a couple of days' time. So. That's the one I fear messing up the most. I'm wondering what goes through your mind at the line, just before the gun goes off, and then I'm going to ask you what goes through your mind at different parts of the race. And I know that each race is different, but if you can give us a general sense of what are you thinking? Start, at the start, just before you start. Well, obviously, there's a lot of nerves. Um, as the years have gone by, I've become more comfortable with the nerves. And, you know, there's, there's before the start line, there's the core rooms and already the nerves are through the roof. Start lines, it's pretty bad. Um, I look around and think everybody's feeling the same and we're all feeling pretty bad. And, again, I like to laugh at it. I actually uh, think, you know, we, we chose this sport. We chose... Uh, we chose, you know, this life, and we've worked so hard to get to this, and now we're going to act like this. You know, th- th- this should be the reward. This is, this is like uh, the time to shine and, and see what we work has led to. So, yeah, I choose excitement over fear, and um, that's what I I, ch- I try to uh, make it into excitement over fear. Yeah. Halfway mark. Hoping to feel comfortable. <laughs> if I feel comfortable, good. <laughs> if I don't, then try and recover to feel good. <laughs> Are you looking for cues out there, like visual cues to make you feel comfortable, to make you feel good when you're running? Or is it all just inside? It's all uh, focusing on the basics. Uh, focusing on breathing, breathing running form, um, anything that can help you get back to um, feeling better. Because you go through so many stages during a race and at points you're going to feel bad, but it doesn't mean, you know, five minutes from now you're going to feel worse. You might feel better. So, yeah. 400 metres out. You know, it's, you're, you're done, basically. Are you, what are you thinking then? 
depends depends which position I'm in. <laughs> you know, if I'm in the front like I was in Houston, uh, feeling pretty good, feeling strong still, I was feeling great, and I didn't know how far back they were. Just, you know, composure, composing yourself to get to the line, uh, saving something in case they come for you again. Um, when I was in Lake Biwa in my marathon debut, uh, I was in third position. I knew that I couldn't catch uh, second. I didn't know how far fourth was behind. Um, yeah, I felt terrible that day. <laughs> uh, but it was just, yeah, get to the line, get to the line and uh, finishing the marathon. Wow, what a feeling like. What is it like? Can you describe that to a non-runner, to somebody who comes up to you? Oh, you run, right? What's it like running a marathon? Well, uh, <laughs> it's a runner's high. That, you know, the runner's high is not, it's not a myth. It's definitely there. Um, you finish a good run and you feel, you feel it. You finish a marathon, you feel it like 10 times fold. It's, it's something special. Um, I'm not usually happy with a third place finish. And, um, you know, expecting so much in my marathon debut and uh, not getting it. Um, to feel so happy like I did still... Just, yeah, it's, a, it's an indescribable feeling, just marathon. <laughs> what has living in Kenya and training with the best of the best taught you as a human being? What have you learned? Well, uh, obviously I've learned a lot through the different and, um, groups that I've been joining over the years. I've learned to coach myself. Uh, I've been self-coached for the last five years. Uh, which has led to all my uh, recent success. Um, so, yeah, other than training, I would say just the fighting mentality, uh, the will it takes to win, uh, you know, demanding the best out of yourself, you know. Seconds, to say uh, you know, I'm not happy with second place is, you know, it sounds like I'm uh, arrogant or something, but, you know, to demand that of yourself and... Yeah, you, that you want to be the best that you can be and you, you believe that that is first place. Uh, that's, that's the mindset and I, I've learned it from them. Um, maybe I had it always. I think maybe a lot of people have it always. Um, but, yeah, just learning, learning the mindset that it, what it takes to be the best. What has running taught you so far about yourself? What have you learned about yourself all these years running? That's, that's a tough one. <laughs> Obviously, I have the will to survive. Um, you know, there's so many ups and downs in running or in any sport. But uh, if, you, if you really love something and you have passion and drive, you can overcome anything to remain in the sport or remain with your passion. So 17-year-old Jake and his twin brother head to Kenya, and all these years later, you know, 11 years later, roughly, did you think that you would end up with a national record and peer in Toronto at, uh, at Black Toe Running and with all this success? Is this what you thought at 17 years old when you headed out there? No, I, I thought I'd have an Olympic gold medal by now. <laughs> but uh, still doing pretty good, and um, I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, I'm, I'm able to share my story and um, influence others. And, you know, if, if I was to be remembered for something, I'd, I'd want to be remembered for, you know, an influence um, throughout the world, you know, not... Not just one country or particular people, but, you know, to prove that through determination and, you know, hard work that regardless of who you are, where you're from, you can achieve what you set out to do. And, uh, if, you know, if I inspire, you know, one person, then hey, I'm, 
I'm doing what I wanted to do, you know. Doing what you want to do. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. My final question for you. How much faster can you go? I, uh, I don't believe in limits. You know, uh, I really don't. Um, so what's the word record now? 201? 201, you know, something like uh, that. So, you know, I, I want to be the best that I can be. And, yeah, I want um, obviously I have a lot more goals to achieve. And I'm still young in the marathon. So I, I believe I'll be running for at least the next uh, 15 years at the highest level. And what I do during that time, who knows? Consistency is key. So if I'm consistent like I have been, especially this year, things are only going to get better. Consistency is key. Ladies and gentlemen, Jake Robertson. Thank you so much. Competing at the Scotiabank Marathon October 21st. And in the morning, very, very early in the morning, but before we let Jay go, we're going to open up the floor for some questions. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be shy. We've got our hand up over in the back there and right here. Okay, we'll start here, and then we've got you in the back, okay? Hi. Um, you said you don't work with a coach? No, not at the moment. Um, I've worked with plenty of coaches in the past. So what are some of the benefits and what are some of the drawbacks that you've experienced with just kind of doing this on your own? Well, the benefits are that I no longer feel the pressure of reading something on a program and saying I have to do it. Because in the past, my motivation has got the better of me. As, an, uh, as a, a professional athlete, we're always so motivated that sometimes we don't listen to common sense. We'll... Um, you know, we'll feel terrible that day, but we'll still go for the session. And that can lead to an injury. You know, one session is not worth two weeks. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the benefits of having a coach uh, is that you learn things that, you know, you didn't know about yourself or, you know, new techniques that you didn't know before. But uh, like I said, I've been through so many coaches. I've trained with Kipchoge. I trained with Patrick Sang. Um, I trained with Haile in Ethiopia. Um, I've trained with so many of the best and learned different techniques from them. And uh, yeah, obviously now I've got to this point. Got another question coming up here. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, why, why Toronto? Why not Chicago, Berlin, why Toronto? Well, uh, I like to go where I feel wanted and... <laughs> Yeah, Chicago this year didn't, um, they didn't really respond to my, ma my agent, so um, Toronto did, with, pa with passion. And yeah, I, I really feel wanted here, and you know, obviously it was, it was this or New York, and New York um, didn't seem to want me as much as Toronto, and yeah, I felt like here was more of an opportunity for a fast time than New York as well, so... Yeah, weighing it all up, and I uh, decided Toronto. Good choice. <laughs> oh, we got a couple more questions here. That's great. And the lady in the purple will get to you in a little bit. Thanks. Um, I actually just want to know what sort of made you decide to switch to the marathon distance from running like halves and sounds like track and cross country before, and why you kind of made that jump. Uh, well, my training uh, suggested that potentially I'd be better at the marathon than any other event. Uh, even if it's not now, uh, eventually I'd be better at the marathon than anything. Uh, reason why, um, sure people can say money is a, is a huge thing, but yeah, sure, money money's in marathon is a lot more. But also the, the lifestyle around what a uh, marathon I can do. So if I'm running two marathons a year, it gives me more time to take off um, with my family, maybe travel to New Zealand. Um, you know, we have more of an off-season opportunity. 
So to live a life around the marathoning world as well is, you know, that's a major reason. Um, two is, you know, it, it's an Olympic event. So, you know, you can run all the road races and halves that you want to, but, yeah, at the end of the day, you want to go to the Olympics. So <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's one re reason. I'm curious um, to ask you what it's like living at altitude and traveling to races where you're at sea level. What's it like going home and recovering and but being back at altitude? Well, arriving, yeah, it's a, it's a strange feeling. Uh, you don't really feel any different uh, until you start running. That's when you realize, yeah, I'm not breathing and you're just flying along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we were just speaking about that this morning. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, obviously, um, recovery down here is a, at sea level is a lot quicker. So you can, you can fly along and not feel it afterwards and recover. And, yeah, when you get back, obviously, the, after the race is the major thing. Um, obviously, your legs are beat up, you're tired, but going back to altitude stores the recovery a bit more even. So, yeah, recovery can be slow. But depending on what you do, what you eat, everything, you know, massage and stuff. So, yeah, depending on what you do is um, more the recovery factor. That's right. You did say massage over ice in the rapid fire question round. Yeah, I'd, I'd prefer um, heat over ice. So sauna... Um, better blood flow, you know, in um, hot conditions rather than cool, cold conditions where it stores the blood. There we go in the back there, Michael. All right. Uh, you said you use a sauna. Do you use a sauna right after your workouts usually? Or do you wait a bit or do it the next day? When do you usually use a sauna? Yeah, um, most, most of the time I'd use that uh, the day after my hard workouts just because I'm too tired to go into town. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, sometimes the day of a hard session, especially if I don't have an evening session and we get into town, then, yeah, we'll use the sauna the day of the hard workout. Anybody, can, uh, anybody who follows my Instagram account can see my stories and daily stories and what I get up to after my hard workouts, usually, and sometimes we're... Posting while I went to the sauna. <laughs> Question here, Jake. Um, when you first got to Kenya, did you get a chance to train under um, Brother Colm O'Connell, the priest that trains Rhodesia? Yes, I did. Um, that was late 2007. Yeah, um, my, one of my earlier mentors, Shaheen, had got injured and vanished from his camp. So it left me and my brother um, kind of on our own because the pacemakers from the training camp all vanished as well. That's when uh, we started training with um, Augustin Chogi and uh, some of the other athletes from St. Patrick's. And that's when Brother Colum invited us to join them full time and we moved into the camp uh, with them. Um, that's when we actually got... Um, put into the Rhodesia squad, which was the development squad, and he had just won the World Juniors. So we got to see him uh, pretty much come up. And uh, I, I learned a lot from Brother Colum, um, a lot of um, the way to train if you're not at the top level already. Uh, a good example of that would be an interval session. So while they were doing 1K repeats and we didn't have the, the sp like speed endurance to hold the whole way, he would get us to run 600s instead, have longer recovery but hold the, hold the speed and quality. And then slowly by slowly, you know, the next month we we're able to do 800s while they do 1Ks. And then slowly, you know, again, 1Ks. So... By that approach, I learned from Brother Colum, and that, that's helped me a lot. So that approach from Father Collins was approach of patience, it sounds like. 
yeah, well, <laughs> you can you can struggle to hold the pace for one or two reps, but then at the end of the day, you're not you're not finishing the session anywhere near what you should, and you dropped off. Uh, you're not you're not feeling uh, too good about yourself either. So, to finish with a good session is always a better feeling than to finish a session where you're not hitting the times you should. Um, I'm curious to know how much strength training is a part of your routine. Actually, uh, strength and conditioning is a major part of uh, my training. Um, the two years of injury I was speaking about, uh, major, a major reason why I've overcome that is because of strength and conditioning. Um, just getting the right diagnosis and the right rehabilitation program you know, the first day the doctor told me, you'll have to do this before you run every day for the rest of your life. You know, it's a shock and it's like, I already do enough. <laughs> you know, but uh, when I got into it and my problem never, never came back. And the more I do this program, the better and better I get, the stronger, the more flexible I get. Um, yeah, results are getting better and... Yeah, obviously now I'm a believer in that and um, I'm going to keep doing it. Unpack that for us. What is the, some of the program comprise of? Yeah, so it's obviously um, on my hard days, I'll just do an activation session, which is 10 to 15 minutes before I leave the house to go for the training. Um, on my easy days, I'll do more like an hour, an hour of um, stretching, uh, stability, core stability exercises, um, hamstring and uh, glutes strengthening, yeah, just uh, all over body um, strengthening condition, conditioning, yeah. What's your least favorite workout and your favorite workout? I want to know both. Uh, probably my least favorite workout would probably be an easy day where I've just, you know, I've, I've spent everything the day before. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't feel good on those days, so that would be my least. That's just like an hour run, easy. Um, my, my favorite workout would be a continuous session, we call them. Uh, that's something like... You know, let's say three three k on or uh, two miles on and one k off, but the one k off recovery is still at a high high pace. So it's uh, really um, it's a specific session for a marathon or a half marathon key workout. How much volume would you do that kind of workout? Like how long would those be typically? It depends on the intensity, but mainly it would be between twenty k to 30K usually. Uh, training, <laughs> again. Uh, what's, what's the workout that gave you the most uh, confidence coming into Toronto? Well, um, recently, yeah, recently I've done a 35K long run. And that was at uh, 216 marathon pace uh, at altitude. So that, uh, that not many people, not many Kenyans are capable of doing up there on that road that we did it on. So it was on, there were, we started with 30 people and I finished with one guy. So yeah, it's, um, that gave me a lot of confidence. Um, I haven't been able to do uh, that time before and feel that good at the end. It, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't a run where I finished and I was completely dead at the finish. So to finish feeling that good still, that gave me a lot of confidence. Uh, it was um, three weeks, three weeks out. Yeah, and that was the last one I knew I'd hit really hard. And after that, I was like, you cannot hit another one like that. <laughs> if I hit too many more like that, I just would be flat. 
So. I have a question. Um, how far in advance do you select your races? Sorry? How far in advance do you select your races? Um, it depends. Um, if the meet director has uh, sent me an invitation, uh, sometimes, like, in January, Houston, I really wanted Houston for, like, six weeks out. But they kept stalling until it was... Uh, I think it was 10 days or one week out. I got, yeah, I got the invitation one week to go. So it really depends on um, if you get the invitation on time. Uh, I could say, uh, you know, I wanted to go here and there, but they might not want me. So it really depends on the meet director. Time for one more. Yeah. One more. Uh, you said you did your homework on uh, Toronto here. Any tips um, for the race on Sunday that you can share? <laughs> Looking for some tips on, uh, on our course here in Toronto. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's your city. So <laughs> I was hoping you could give me some. But yeah, um, well, the main thing to be watching out for would be the weather. If there is a wind, uh, where it's coming from, whether it's going to blow from the side or you know, whether it's going to be blowing in your face for the last 10K, because that cannot make a, you know, an end to a marathon too comfortable. We can give you tips on the course later. Um, <laughs> thank you very much to Jake, you know, for coming and making the trip. Everybody's, actually, the group was a little bit shy tonight. It says something, right? They are really keen, lots of, tr lots of chatter before the race, but, or before you came today, but very, very excited to have you here. Um, big thank you to Rosie as well for coming to do this professionally for us. Do a great job.